Hello everyone, welcome back to Anvil of Doom Miniatures episode 6. My name is Deets and praise how should you're here. Recently I sniped a box of these bad boys, these chorps, and today I'm going to paint them up for you so let's get into it. So Warhammer Fantasy's had some really weird and wacky models and one of the armies that really stands out in this category are the Chorfs or Chaos Dwarfs as they like to be called. So unfortunately these guys were phased out due to popularity but they are some of the coolest minis. Now I would love to collect a Chorf army or Chaos Dwarf army but they're so bloody expensive that I can't. I've seen models of upwards of $450 and it's just crazy. My missus would drop me if I spent this money on these models. One day I will buy them all. Let's get into it. So when I first got these models, they weren't on the sprue, unfortunately. They were separated, but I gave them a bit of a clean up, trying to clean up those mold lines. Now I'm shit at cleaning mold lines up. Usually I find that when I put the undercoat on later that the mold lines just show up anyway. So I tried my best, but there's still gonna be mold lines there, but I'm not going for Golden Demon, so eh, who cares? So after these were all prepped, I used a black undercoat. So usually I like to use a white undercoat, Black's a bit drab for me. I like to make my models really bright and the colors really saturated. But with these models, obviously they got black beards and black everything everywhere. So I went for a black undercoat and then I used a Xenothal highlight. And this Xenothal highlight helped me later because it was really hard for me to find some of the little details, even though the details are pretty simple, but I find the Xenothal highlight really helped me with that. Now first up, I love to do my faces. Faces are really, really important, really sets the tone, really gets me going. I can see where the models are gonna go. Now, because I had 10 models, I had to do 10 faces. And by the time I got to the sixth face, I got much, much better at doing it. So what I used was, I used Acadian Flesh Tone for the undercoat, then I slapped on some Gullowing Flesh. And then I used Kislev Flesh. Now, I just put this on all the raised areas, like the cheeks and the nose. After this, I mixed in a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh, only a little bit. And then I started to put that on the raised areas, not to try to cover up the last layer of paint. And then I used a little bit more Pallid Witch Flesh in the mix, and then I went over those raised areas again. Lastly, I just did little dots of Pallid Witch Flesh on the tip of the nose and the tip of the cheeks. I wanted to give these guys a bit more of a gaunt look. Now, dwarfs usually have like red rosy cheeks and whatnot from high blood pressure, I'm guessing. But these guys here, I want to make them a little bit more gaunt because they are the evil version of the dwarfs. Now, after this, I move straight onto the eyes. Now, the eyes are always the hardest part because you don't want them to look like they're pretty bunged. But anyway, what I did was I used, this, I used a really skinny brush, the side of my brush, and I just put a little bit of white in the black crevice. Then after that, I used a black dot, just of um, Abaddon black, and I just carefully placed that in the middle, really taking my time. So with the teethy tusks, I just put down some bone white, and then I mixed bone white with a little bit of white, and just applied that to the top part of the tusk, and then I just did a spot highlight of white. And I pretty much did the same thing with the skull on the hat, just making sure those white highlights are up the top of the skull and around the eyes. Now usually I use a dark brown for my eyes, but because these guys are pretty black and the box art looks pretty black, I just went for black for the eyes. So after this, I went back over the mini with some Abaddon black over the beard and over the hat and, um, and the shoulder pads. I just wanted to give it a true black because I was finding with the Xenothal highlight, it was looking a little bit gray, too gray for my liking. Now for the true metallic metals and I slapped on some gun metal. I like this because it's a really dark silver and I can build up from there, which you will see later. I apply that to his little tip on the hat and his axe. Now moving on to the base coats. I used a dark green for the gloves and for the little tunic under the armour. I think I did around three coats and I did this across ten minis. 
what was weird about this project was that what I thought would take the longest amount of time took the shortest amount of time, and what took the shortest amount of time took the longest amount of time. And batch painting for me is a nightmare. I really hate it. So I just wanted to get this one video out of the way and do at least do one batch paint. Uh, on Anvil of Doom miniatures. All right, now moving on to the reds. Now what I did for this one, I used Evil Sun Scarlet on the raised areas, all around the hat, on the armor trim, and on the back of the scale mail. So just going over this, now use like an inky texture. I mixed in about half water, and I just applied this everywhere, really taking my time not to try to get it in parts I didn't want to get it on. And I used about four or five coats of this to get it coming through. Now, if it was a white undercoat, I feel like I would have been able to do, use less. But because it was black, it took a lot of time and a lot of paint. And again, I had to do this over 10 models, and man, I was screaming. I then slapped on a bit of dryad bark on the boots just to start those leathers off. Now all my base coats were pretty much complete and so what I did was at this point I went back and I just used a little bit of Abaddon Black just to clean up the areas that had paint that kind of slipped over or me being a bit messy. So at this point I was fatigued, I was tired, I was like, oh, so over it. After working on 10 minis, it really got me down. I just hated it. There was no diversity between each model. It was just, oh God, I, I was screaming. So I really wanted to wrap this up quick. So what I did was I used a mix of Lothan Green and Dark Green. I mixed those two together and I started applying that on the gloves, just going all over. I used pure Lothan Green and I just went over the highlighted areas where I thought light would hit on the gloves. So after that, I used my favorite green of all the greens, the Moot Green, Mwah, absolute beautiful green. And I did under the, the highlights under the tunic and I also did the highlights on the gloves. Now taking my time anywhere where, you know, I wanted little creases to be raised to make it look a bit more lifelike. I also did the edge highlighting on the knuckles and uh, on the trim of the gloves. Okay, so the greens were done, praise Hashut. Now we moved on to the reds. What I did here was I used some Flesh Terrors Red, just a bit of a wash, straight out of the pot, and just went all over the scale mail. So for the highlights in the red, I used Wild Rider Red, and I just went around each of the little points, mainly doing it on the, like, on the upward facing areas. I took my time, did the, did the point on the arrow and the sides of the arrow, went back around the armor, did each little scale mail bit on the left and the right of those, and just worked my way on the shoulder pads and anywhere really there was uh, red that needed to be highlighted. Now for the final highlight, I used Orange Fire. Now I had to go get a, an airbrush paint from Vallejo because where I live in the middle of nowhere, I can't get anything. So this is a really thin down paint. So I had to use a few coats on this, which made the process even longer. So what I did was I only used this paint on the raised areas of the reds. So the tip of the little arrows and on the tips of the armor panels and anywhere that was raised. And I went around and did this absolutely everywhere. Now this made the reds go from like a cooler red to a really fire red. And it's perfect for Chaos Dwarves because they're fiery little buggers. And so after that was done, all the reds were finished. It was looking schmicko. And I was, was feeling pretty good about this now. I was like, okay, now we're in the end game, but we really weren't because I had a lot more to go, unfortunately. Okay, now we got to the leathers. Now I used a Doomble Brown and I just applied that over the boots and over the pouch. Now don't forget the pouch. I forgot the pouches and I had to go back and do them all again, which was, ugh. Now after I applied that Doomble Brown, I just used a little bit of Scrag Brown, just applying that around. Now I find these colors are really good for making it look like a worn leather, like a red leather, and I really love this effect. After this, I mixed a little bit of Scrag Brown with a little bit of uh, Bone White, and I just mixed those together and just did a tiny little edge highlight just on the tip of the boot.
all right so we're looking good now and you know it's really starting to come together so this is the kind of like the final step or one of the final steps not really the final step but one of the final steps and so what I did here was with the blacks they were looking too black so I got administratum gray and I used one part of that to two parts avidon black and I mixed that together and just applied that on uh, the hat and in between the the red and around the shoulder pads and just anywhere there was black and I also blocked that on the beard so this just gives it a little point of difference and so after this I mixed in a little bit more administratum gray to the mix and I just did a little faint line on the top of the hat and also on the tops of the armor panels and back onto the beard and the, and the gray hairs. So I got my skinniest brush and I just took my time doing each little mustache strand, each little monobrow strand of hair, just taking my time because when you look at it and you look at the face, it's the most important part. Okay, so this is starting to look real good now. And so I just got my pure administratum gray and I just did little highlights, just tiny little highlights on the beard and on the eyebrows. Now I didn't do this on the hat on the armor panels because I didn't think it needed it because I really wanted the, the face and the beard to be the focal point of this mini. All right, we're looking good. Home straight now, moving on to the true metallic metals. So with the true metallic metals, what I like to do is just blop on a bit of null oil, just on the tip of the hat. And also I just like to apply the null oil onto parts of the ax where the light wouldn't be, so the darker parts of the ax. So I just put some null oil on the top of the little point on the ax, and then I would do it on the opposite side on the top of that little point on the ax, and then on the bottom of the ax and you know, vice versa. And then from here, I'd get a nice silver paint water it down and then use it kind of as a glaze and I would just glaze that to where light would be. After this I mix three parts silver to one part white paint and I use this for a little edge highlight and this was the final step for me and I was going crazy. I kind of rushed it in the end because I was just wanting to get this done and get it out the door. Alright guys, the chores are finished. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Make sure you like and subscribe and maybe put a comment down below and let me know what you think or maybe let me know what models you would like me to paint in the future. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Cheers.